All right, so here we are. Welcome back. Um, today we're going to look at uh, the Middle Kingdom and the uh, New Kingdom uh, of Egypt. Uh, in class, we took a look at the uh, Old Kingdom, which uh, is right in here. Okay, that's why there are pyramids right there, because that's the only time they built pyramids. Uh, but our purposes today are just to learn about some of the things in the Middle Kingdom and, and New Kingdom and kind of make a, you know, we might cr even create a timeline as, as we're doing this. Um, so you could even start it back uh, in the Archaic period, uh, which is about 3100. Talked about that today in class from King Narmer uh, on to 2650. Okay, and that's the Archaic period. Okay, following that uh, was the Old Kingdom. Um, so this again was when we had the pyramids built. Um, you, again, you can see that in here as well. Um, and we're going to really focus today though more on Middle Kingdom and the New Kingdom. So here we go. So if you have your map out, uh, we can just get the labeling out of the way right away because uh, this map will, will help us out. So you got Upper Egypt here and Lower Egypt again. Uh, this is uh, because of the direction of the Nile. Um, and then we have uh, Memphis, which we talked about in class, uh, and I just covered it up, but uh, Giza is also there. Uh, this is where uh, the capital was, Memphis, and uh, the pyramids at Giza, this is, is where they still remain today. Uh, so in the Middle Kingdom, though, okay, so as we enter the Middle Kingdom, um, one of the th actually, it's, it's important to recognize prior to the Middle Kingdom, we had the first intermediate period, uh, which basically had uh, a bunch of, you know, poor floods. Uh, there was a lot of hunger and death, and the pharaohs kind of splintered out, meaning... Um, you know, some people claimed that they were the pharaohs, and they kind of spread throughout the Nile, and it was just a down a down period. So the Middle Kingdom starts about 2040, and is going to go to about 1640. Uh, so during that period, um, the region of Luxor and Thebes are going to you know really rise up. So here we have Luxor and Thebes. So make your way up the Nile. Uh, and you can label those. Um, so trade resumes in Egypt, irrigation projects pick up again, and overall there's a lot of prosperity in the Middle Kingdom. Uh, the new thing with the Middle Kingdom, though, is that they now have a lot of foreigners. So many foreigners arrived, which is going to be an issue uh, later. Um, one of the things about this also, this period, uh, the pharaohs are significantly less powerful than they were in the Old Kingdom. Um, again, I think I mentioned it in class, the Old Kingdom is really going to be your richest, most creative period when the pharaohs had the most power, um, and again, when they built the pyramids. All right, so uh, this is about it for the Middle Kingdom. Uh, one of the issues that's going to bring them down are the foreigners. So let's take a look at the second intermediate period, uh, which is going to go from six, oops, 1640 to 1550. Okay, uh, and like I said, the foreigners are threatening Egyptian power at this time, so the Egyptians actually named uh, these people the Hyksos. Okay, so Hyksos, which to the Egyptians meant rulers of foreign lands. Uh, but for our purposes, we'll just refer to them as the Hyksos, who take over. Um, and at the same time, the Hebrews are going to migrate during this, this period. So Hebrews migrate uh, you know, from the Holy Land and arrive in Egypt. Uh, but by 1550, okay, so the end of the second intermediate period, uh, the Egyptians are going to drive out the Hyksos. So the Hyksos are gone. Uh, however, the Hebrews remain. And at this point, the Hebrews are going to be enslaved. Okay, uh, but 1550 will also mark the beginning of the New Kingdom. 
So here we go. Uh, the New Kingdom, uh, as indicated in this chart, is just three dynasties long. So again, a dynasty meaning uh, a group all led by the same family, then a new dynasty comes in here, and a new one here. So uh, 18th, 19th, and 20th dynasty. Now you might see some familiar names. Um, King Tut is in here, so he doesn't rule too long. Um, we hardly mentioned him, uh, but you could probably guess that this guy here, King Ramses II, is a big deal. Um, we will refer to this guy, King Tutmos III, um, as well as Hatshepsut, which I just covered her up too, but she's right after Tutmos III. So the New Kingdom brought on what we call the warrior kings. Uh, at this time, Egypt really advances in terms of their army, uh, and they advance in terms of their weaponry as well, uh, as they are influenced uh, by outsiders, um, but you know more so to protect Egypt now that it uh, had been subject to uh, foreign attack. So we're going to skip over uh, a bunch of these, and one of the first pharaohs we're going to mention is actually Hatshepsut. Okay, and Hatshepsut was a woman. Uh, let me get her name here for you. Hatshepsut. Okay, um, and she was considered the queen who would be king. Um, she did a great job being pharaoh. Uh, she encouraged trade and not war. Uh, she ruled for about 15 years, and she left the most amount of monuments uh, behind uh, that Egypt had ever seen. Now this right here, this image that you're seeing, um, this is actually her her temple, her tomb, uh, where she was buried again uh, in the New Kingdom and the Middle Kingdom for that matter. Uh, they're buried in these tombs and not in the pyramids. Uh, let's see if we can get a picture of her today. Yep, here she is. Uh, so not too bad for a few thousand years old, uh, but that's her. Okay, so the next guy is Tutmos III. Uh, he's going to rule shortly after uh, Hatshepsut, uh, a lot more warlike. Uh, so he is going to try to expand Egypt uh, up on into Palestine and Syria. Uh, we'll get into more about those places later. Um, also further to the south into Nubia. And many historians have called this guy the Napoleon of Egypt. And I think we got a modern day picture of him. Here he is. Uh, still got a smile on his face, so so that's good. Uh, the next guy is kind of one of the most interesting uh, figures in Egyptian history, and that is Akhenaten. Uh, he was originally named Amenhotep IV, but he is going to try to completely change the Egyptians' religion. Uh, he believed that Aten was the only god, Aten, okay, uh, and believed that this was the single god. And some argue that this uh, could be considered the first monotheistic religion, although the Hebrews had been around before this. Uh, so, you know, there's debate as to which you would believe. Um, but Akhenaten tries to, to create this single religion um, in Egypt, which everyone's pretty much upset about. Um, and after he dies, things are going to go back to normal. Um, but he's also kind of an interesting figure because he doesn't look like a lot of the other pharaohs. Uh, he has more woman-like features. Uh, and you can see that um, in you know his hips, which you can pick up right here. He has more of that uh, shape. And I actually have another image of him. Uh, if I move this one to the side, you can see uh, same type of thing here. Like th these are are features that are you know typically more uh, in, in a woman. So historians debated a while about him whether he may have been a uh, female, but you know most believe that it was he was a male. Um, but you know he's just kind of one of these in interesting characters in Egyptian history. All right, and finally, the last guy we're going to look at is Ramses II. Um, Ramses is the one back from that, that chart that ruled for the longest time. Um, 
this guy, uh, he had a treaty with the Hittites, uh, which we mentioned earlier, coming on down toward Egypt. Uh, so he, he stopped the fighting there. Um, but he had a lot of major architectural achievements um, and ruled for quite some time. He said to have at least 100 kids or something. Um, but I guess if you rule that long, uh, the possibility um, is there for that. Uh, this is his uh, tomb that you see on the right here, and I think I have a, an image. Oops, I think I have an image of him. No, I don't. Thought I had an old old image of him as well. Um, but Ramses, like I said, is going to have a lot of building projects. Um, but this right here uh, is actually showing you the Valley of the Kings. So this is more of where all these uh, pharaohs are born are are. Um, buried in, in these tombs. Okay, again, this is a little bit further south. Uh, this is in the, you know, Luxor uh, region as well. So following the New Kingdom, um, you, you have this major decline uh, in Egypt, uh, and mostly it is because of invasions. Okay, so a lot of these invasions will come from uh, people like the Philistines, Palestine, the Libyans, the Nubians. and the Assyrians, which we had mentioned earlier in Mesopotamia, so they are going to make their way all the way to Egypt. Um, so after that, you could consider another uh, third intermediate period. Then there's the late period, which we're not going to get into any details with that. Uh, but after the late period, um, there will not be another Egyptian ruler in Egypt uh, for quite some time. Uh, I believe it's not till the 18th or 19th century. Uh, so we have the Romans eventually are going to control Egypt. Uh, Alexander will, will conquer it. Um, and then Muslim empires are going to expand and, and control it as well. Uh, so we will get more into that uh, throughout our course. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed uh, the talk on Egypt. And uh, we're going to move on to another river civilization, India.